II, crowned at Westminster Abbey on June 2, 1953. This was the first time the public was able to witness this sacrosanct moment. Elizabeth had allowed live television cameras in to capture it, in a powerful signal that this was a new, open and relevant monarchy. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary, known as Lilibet to Friends, was born on April the 21st, 1926. It was only a decade later that she knew she was truly destined to lead an empire. It was a fluke of history, a work of scandal. A few hours ago, I discharged my last duty as king and emperor. Her uncle, Edward, abdicated to marry the love of his life, Wallace Simpson, an American divorcee and therefore spoiler to the throne. Elizabeth's father became king. She was the accidental heir, which entrenched in her a sense of duty. She was devout, almost spiritual, about her responsibilities as a royal, even before being crowned. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. I seem to remember having, having listened to that speech and remember, I remember very well, I certainly remember reading, not so much, not many years later, the way she dedicated her life to the country. And that was an example which I very much felt that when I grew older, that, 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 was, that was what it was about. You dedicate your life to your country. On November the 20th, 1947, she wed her childhood sweetheart, the tall and dashing Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark titled the Duke of Edinburgh. The following year, their marriage bore Elizabeth's heir, Prince Charles. For more than half a century, the Queen led her empire, before overseeing its managed decline as it became known as the Commonwealth, an association of now independent countries. Sir Winston and Lady Churchill came to receive Her Majesty. And her first Prime Minister was Winston Churchill. During her rule, she met every acting US president bar one, meetings that she always prioritized. She remembers learning from her parents how important um, keeping America on side was during the war, and then America came into the war. She remembers that so well. She remembers, you know, the American troops, D-Day, all that. To her, it's, it's, very, it's a very important part of, of her growth. of her growing up. Whilst the British monarch has no political power, Elizabeth wielded immense power as a figurehead, as demonstrated in 2011, when she became the first monarch to visit neighboring Ireland since its separation from the United Kingdom. We can all see things which we would wish. Then Prime Minister David Cameron described the trip as a game changer in Anglo-Irish relations. A year later, the Queen travelled to Belfast in another significant moment of her reign, an historic handshake with former IRA commander Martin McGuinness, a public symbol of peace following decades of conflict in Northern Ireland. There was, nonetheless, a very private side to this wife, mother and grandmother. Stiff upper-lipped in public, and so guarded, there's little footage to show the sense of humour she's reputed to have displayed behind closed doors. On occasion, she did open up, with uncharacteristic candour and emotion. The Queen herself marked 1992 as a very bad year. It has turned out to be an annus horribilis. Punctuated by several family splits and a fire at her beloved Windsor Castle. Three of her four children would divorce, Charles most famously, and then that crash. We are just getting word that the French government uh, has informed all of us that Princess Diana has died. The royal family's restrained response collided with the British public convulsing in heartache. Elizabeth learned a tough lesson through all of the grief. She wasn't merely a mother or a grandmother, rather a queen to a people no matter what.
an enduring image, the Queen bowing her head to Princess Diana's coffin, marking a sad period for the royal family, Britain, and its relationship with the monarchy. Over more than a decade, however, public faith in the royal family did rebuild. The Queen was visibly thrilled by the show of support for the royal wedding between her grandson, William, and partner, Kate, in 2011. Then the following year, polls showed the British royal family at the height of their popularity as the Queen celebrated 60 years on the throne. She used her diamond jubilee to present a slimmed down monarchy. Only the key royals paraded and waved, a sign of a more economic family for the 21st century. In later years, the Queen welcomed several additions to the family, including Prince George, her first great-grandson and future heir to the throne born in 2013 to the then Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. Reflecting the modern age, Prince Harry later married Meghan Markle, the royal family extending again to embrace an actress with African-American ancestry, in time welcoming baby Archie. Prince Philip retired from public duties in 2017. Meanwhile, the Queen continued indefatigable she gradually slowed her busy schedule, certainly in terms of travel, but in September 2015, whilst opening a new railway in Scotland, without ceremony or commemorative fireworks, Queen Elizabeth II passed her revered predecessor, Victoria, to become Britain's longest reigning monarch. Controversy visited the family again in 2019, as the Queen's second son, Prince Andrew, gave an ill-advised interview to the BBC amid allegations of sexual misconduct. I let the side down. Any hopes for a quieter year ahead were dashed when Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, made a shock announcement at the start of 2020. This is the last time they'll be walking into the Abbey. Yeah. Giving up their public roles and duties, they moved to North America with a mission to become financially independent. Crisis talks and another contentious interview soon followed. In 2021, at the age of 99, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, passed away. Senior royals attended the funeral, scaled back due to coronavirus, to celebrate his seven decades of service and mourn the passing of a devoted husband, father, grandfather and great-grandfather. We therefore pray. Elizabeth stood alone as she watched his coffin lower into the royal vault in Windsor bidding farewell to her husband of 73 years, the man she described as her strength and stay. She will be remembered as one of the great monarchs, able to hand a strengthened crown to her heir, despite reigning over a period of tumultuous change.